welcome to a new plug and groove video. My name is John Skippy Limcool. Hands together, head out. Welcome. Hey, so that really cool groove you're hearing at the beginning of this video, we're going to make that as one of the wave sequences that we are going to do right now. I want to show you how to get into rhythmic wave sequencing. This is an ability that became a reality with Unify 1.2. This is a free update. If you own Unify, you can download it from logging into plugandguru.com. Also at ilio.com slash unify dash updates. I'll put the link on the screen. You can download the files to update from there. And we thank you for being Unify customers. It makes us very happy to have lots of happy people expanding what they can do with their plugins. That's what this is all about. So this is really unique. I was very fortunate in 1990. God, that sounds like a long time ago. Uh, to work 30 years ago, wow, uh, to work on the first Korg wave station. And some of my samples got put into it, which is really fun. On the Korg wave state introduced early this year, I was also fortunate to be invited to work on both patches and actually Korg licensed samples for me that you can find inside of Unify, which is really cool. And that was very fun to work on as well. Now, that type of wave sequencing is different than what you'll find in Unify. This is a little bit more basic but it has a unique difference that wave station and wave state don't. And that's the timing of the wave sequences. Plus the fact that every segment of a wave sequence, instead of just being a waveform, can now be any plugin you own. So you can go from huge string orchestra libraries to your favorite synthesizers to all sorts of things in between. It really opens up all sorts of cool new doors to not be limited just to a list of waveforms from one synth. So those are some really cool advantages. I'm going to show you those advantages here shortly. If you want to get into seeing how these work, you can go to the Unify Standard Library, type parentheses, WS, close the parentheses. And these patches are patches I created that are using wave sequencing. There's big crazy things like that. Rhythmic group. Now let's say in this case, I wanted to take this first hit, which is a guitar distorted. I could go over here and say, no, I want to use zebra. And I want to use, let's say, let's just go through a, let's use a can sound. Now, if I want, I could go to poly box, which is currently set to play 15 layers, change it to four. <laughs> See what it's doing? It's only letting it go to the fourth layer and then it starts back up the top. That's how we do the controlling of the steps. You have up to 16 timing events and you could have it over four majors play 16 nice and slow or one major with 16th notes. However you want to do it, 16 is the max because we're doing this by changing layers. Each layer is listening to a different MIDI channel. And it's all being done through the conductor up here, Polybox. So let me show you that in action. But before we do that, I need to point out that this video is sponsored by my website, plugandguru.com. It's Black Friday time. So right now, 16 libraries are on sale, 40%, 50% off. There's bundles in there, crazy big bundles that are incredibly discounted. It's the lowest prices I offer all year. So it's the best chance to save lots of money right now. And on top of that, this is Monday night. Each night this week until Cyber Monday, I'm adding a new library a day to the pool. So go to plugandguru.com. You get inspiring patches. I get to keep doing this as a full-time job, which is my joy in life. So thank you for your support. It's a win-win for all of us. You guys get inspiring patches to be creative and make the next big masterpiece you're going to go for. So, cool stuff, right? Okay, so let's start from scratch. All right, so we've hit init. We're going to start from scratch to do this so you can see how to make your own from scratch. Um, to start with, let's go over here to the little bullet and go to the DX bank and let's say plucked for this layer, okay? And... Maybe a different sound, so you can open up, go to the cart, 
With the banks for DX, what's really cool is it saves all 32 patches in their cart <laughs> inside of it. So, oh, I like that. But I want it to be shorter. So if we look at the algorithm, this is algorithm 17, where operator one is the only one at the bottom. So that's the only one you actually hear. Everybody else is beating up on it. So let's go to this and make the release shorter. And let's take the levels down to zero. Make it shorter. I want to get it brighter. So I want to bring in this operator's at volume zero. Cool. That's nice and snappy. Now, what we're going to do to start with, we're going to use our arpeggiator to give us perfect timing. And then we're going to go over and make a MIDI file to make it imperfect timing, just to show you the difference. Okay. So let's go over here. Um, ah. So go to layer. The next step, I would go to add MIDI effects, add an empty MIDI layer. So the concept is this, you have something doing the timing and then you have polybox is what has to be there to distribute to the different layers. Polybox is the whole magic trick to make this whole thing work. So we're going to first go arpeggiators, blue arp. I'm going to set it just to eighth notes. I'm going to set it to four repeating steps and make them all chords. Okay. Now, in order to hear this, you have to go to your instrument layer, go where it's, well, let's name it. So we're going to call this the wave sequence. Conductor. So you see where it says in? Click right there and changes to wave sequence conductor. Um, so let's play. Cool. So that's what I expect, right? Now, wave sequencing is like I showed you, sequentially going from one layer to the next. So let's just have this do four layers. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the bullet. I'm going to say, Duplicate this to, and I'll say, let's do all three. So we can say three. So it makes four layers. Each one, it advances to the next MIDI channel. So we got MIDI channel one, two, three, four. They're all listening to the wave sequence conductor. So not working yet because we don't have poly box. So after the blue ARP, go right here, go to Unify Standard, Creative, Poly Box. It's set to four by default. Cool. We need to go to the mode and make it chord slash auto release. That's what CH slash AR means. And so what will happen now is it will distribute each timing event to the next layer. So let's go to each of these layers. I'm just going to pick different sounds. I'm not even thinking about what these are. So I'm gonna go cart. Let's say I'm thinking a little bit, but I don't know this cart very well of sounds. So there we go. So now when I play a chord, interesting. Let's go to this one, change some frequencies. Let's get some of these envelopes to get these snappier. Cool. So that's the basics of wave sequencing. Instead of using Blue Arp, I want to use MIDI Box and I want to play something in and make it a MIDI file. So let's go over here to Logic. That's my sequencer of choice. I'm going to, you can use any sequencer you want. Go in, go record. Okay. So let's see, I can quantize, but let's take the timing down strength wise for the quantize to like 60%. So it's got a little human feel to it. So let's see how many events is this? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? So we have twelve events. To make this work as a wave sequence means we need twelve layers. So let's go over here and say, uh, well, first of all, let's go command seven and look at this 
The first timing event, I want to be right on 1.1. The other rule for the sequence that you need to look at for your MIDI file is make sure that this doesn't go past the end of the bar. If it does that, then uh, the way that these things work is it makes a measure of silence. So you don't want to go past the bar where you want to repeat back to the beginning. So we're set. I'm going to say this is 12 step JL groove wave sequence. Such a creative name there. I'm going to export this as a MIDI file to my wave sequence folder. So now I can go over here, have that go out of the way, get unified back. So that means I need 12 layers. So I need to make additional layers to get this to work. So I'm at four. I can go to number four and I want to advance to the next MIDI channel and keep going and say duplicate the next seven. So we're up to 11. We need one more. So we're going to go here, click this bullet, say one more. And now we have uh, 11. We have 12 layers. So now we go up, turn back on poly box, open it up. Since we have 12 layers, we need to tell it we have 12. So we go up here and say we need 12 MIDI channels. And then we go to the art and we say, no, we want this to be MIDI box. Click here. Let's load up that MIDI wave sequence that we did right here. Turn off mute. And now cool. And now you just play with the sounds coming up with different sounds for the different parts. So we can go, let's say cart, use that sound for that layer. Uh, for this layer, let's say we want to go over here, use that sound. I don't know what sounds these are. I'm just randomly picking. And what's fun is when you get into this, you can go to any of your plugins and use those for each of these layers too. It doesn't just have to be a patch from that plugin. We can say massive for this last one. And let's go to the power pack and choose uh, browser, plugin group power pack. Let's say some quarter of the cool royalty for that one. And let's go to this other layer. Let's say Hive for this last one. And let's change through patches. There's a, there we go, Brassy. So now, Play around, find different sounds. Maybe for this one, we want it to be, maybe we want this to be a Zebra 2 patch. So let's go through the list. It's experimental. This is the land of sonic new territory. You never know what you're going to get when you're playing with this. As you can hear, some of the sounds that have effects on them are really cool. So let's add effects to some of these other parts. So let's go over here, unify. Let's add like maybe a water verb here for the first one. Let's go to this one and add delays. Let's add distortion to the delay. Let's make these be longer delay times. <laughs> and then 
The acid test, of course, is to put this into a production. So let's go to Big Bad Beats. Let's see, if we type in WS, that shows up some cool grooves that we can just say, add this into Unify with no pitch so I can play chords and have a cool drum groove. Let's add another one to this. Let's go here and say XX. That called up all the modified grooves. That's interesting. Adding three drum grooves. And then we could go over here to Unify Standard. Maybe to like a BPM pad. So click here to go. BPM pad. And let's add a wave sequence. So let's go over here, say add this into a new Unify layer. Let's turn it down. This is 16th layer. So <laughs> don't need that. never know where you're going to end up. They make so much fun to add rhythmic interest, harmonic things changing. Oh, there's a cool way. Is it right here? Yes. So let's take this one and let's do something interesting. Let's go maybe to Dune 3. What the heck? Let's go to like some sort of a cool plucky kind of thing. Uh, let's go plug. Oh, there it is. That's cool. Bah. Take it up an octave. Put the delay on it. So, it's experimental. It's a fun opportunity to play with your plugins. That's the whole reason Unify exists, is to give you places to put your plugins into examples and try them out in a real-time way that's different than anything else. It's been really, really fun to develop this. We, we got a long way to go. Long way to go. We got more stuff we're going to be doing that is really, really cool. So, we just keep adding cool things to the list. And this is a fun one. So, I hope this helped. Remember, the timing is based on the MIDI file. Polybox distributes. If I set this to only be set to, like, say, four layers now, it's only cycling the wave sequence between these four layers. So make sure when you're playing with this that you have the number of the pool size to equal how many notes are in your sequencer. Actually count the notes. You really need to do that. Go over to your sequencer, look at it, count how many timing events there are. And the really, the, the great way to tell whether you have it right is when you play notes. Right? So my pool is 12. If I had it at 11, That last hit was my first sound because I didn't have my pool size right. So this is the key to getting it to repeat the sequence with the number of events in your sequence. I hope that makes sense. But it's really fun what you can do. Take the time to figure it out. And as you saw, we started with just four. So if you go just to four layers, have an arpeggiator playing even just the eighth note, just one eighth note and just repeating it as chords. 
so you can just play with different layers doing different sounds have fun it's all about being creative so hope this helps all right see you later bye